And then it dawns on me as a man of 30 something years old that hold on a second. And as I look at this Bible, there is an old covenant. There's a new covenant. There's a climax at a cross right in the middle and it's not done yet. Mm. So it just gave me the purpose. This is my story. Like the greatest story ever told. There's already a book of James, so I can't claim it. There's a book of Jimmy. In this story, in God's book, version of this book, this is just the canonized version of it, but God has a story that's being written right now. And not only that, it's an action movie. Mm -hmm. Like this story isn't some, you know, after school special. All of a sudden the purpose comes out, accountability comes out. You say, what are you doing, man? Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Pursuit. I am super excited uh, to introduce the guest that we've got today. It's just me going solo, uh, doing a, uh, an interview with, with our guest. And, uh, and I have a feeling I don't know why, Jimmy. And that is because, man, you're a former Navy SEAL. And uh, I'm, I'm just not sure that Jeff Hutchin would have the, the, the fortitude, I think, to, <laughs> to deal with the intensity that's on this stage right Let's now. It, uh, I'm just teasing. Um, but it is just me today, and I'm, I'm happy to be with you, Jimmy Graham. Uh, but before we start to get into the interview, I want to introduce our, our charter sponsor, uh, Premier Home Loans. And uh, they have been with us since day one. And I tell you what, whether you're buying, selling, refinancing, or building your dream home, you've got a lot riding on your loan officer. And you know, I like to think about this, Jimmy. Back in the day, uh, when we first bought our first house, right? There was sort of two flavors of home loans, right? It was vanilla or chocolate. It's 15 year or 30 year. Not much right. else, right? Now we, we have it's sort of a, a boutique, if you will, of options around uh, home loans and, and kind of designing it in, in a way that's going to meet your needs. And these guys over at uh, Premier Home Loans are, are doing just that. They will sit down with you, kind of get you connected with uh, and unravel the, the tangled web of uh, home loan options that are available out there in the world today. And uh, Gary and the team over there at Premier Home Loans will take good care of you. So if you're looking to buy, sell, refinance your home, uh, definitely reach out to them. You can find them on the web at premierhomeloansco.com. We've got them dropped here in the lower third, and I know that they would be happy to hear from you, so reach out to them. All right, we are going to dive into this, man. We, uh, we've got Jimmy Graham. I already ruined the surprise. We've got Jimmy Graham. For those that uh, may have had their eyes closed and not seen the, the <laughs> camera one angle of this, they may have thought that we were going to be interviewing the, the Green Bay Packers tight end. But I'll even say that we upped the game on that in terms of the uh, level of accomplishment and achievement. And I'm not, not exaggerating. Uh, Jimmy spent over 15 years as a Navy SEAL. I could just end it right there and just say that's enough of, it, of the intro. Uh, but he earned the rank of Chief Petty Officer, which is E7. I actually knew Seven. that. My dad was in the Army, and so I kind of – you sort of – now I know that Learned Navy's a little bit, a little bit different, <clears throat> but, yeah. but uh, you kind of get to know what, what ranks and, and that sort of thing. Uh, E1 to what, E10 or something? Nine. Command Sergeant Major in the Army? Uh, right? Navy B9, yeah. Nine, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but during that time, he earned certifications as a sniper, a joint tactical air controller, a range range safety officer. That's important. Nobody shoots each other, right? <laughs> good. For live fire. Uh, dynamic movement and master training specialist. And I'm sure that all of these have acronyms to go with them, don't they? I'm sure. Just the listen. Military, on. yeah. Just listen on. I, uh, what, like what is a DRSO? Like people are like dynamic range safety officer. Like well, you know that's a thing. You know if you're gonna move around with guns, there's right. there's, there's a way to do it. People yeah. are like, I would just wing it and walk around the yard and shoot stuff. I'm like okay, see how that works out for you. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, not not too well. And uh, served as seven years uh, for seven years as an operator and lead instructor for the elite federal government protection detail for high risk and critical environments to include a bunch of places over there overseas right. in Iraq. Afghanistan, Beirut, Lebanon, et cetera, right? A lot happening, a lot you've done in your career. Um, tell us about that. Before we get to kind of what's on your heart and what God is leading you into and what you're doing sure. today, tell us about your story, man. And by the so, way, before you get started, please, what we're going to do is we're going to tee up part of your story. Yeah. Like I know that you've got some stories where, you know, I, hey, I ran into a burning hut and rescued this, this <laughs> little girl and, you know, all of that. But in about 30 days, we're going to have you do a pursuit story. Yeah, and uh, for those that are watching and and know that you know we we've, we've got the uh, this new format called Pursuit Stories where it's all about man just hearing your testimony and uh, and what God's done in your life. So I want you to kind of withhold a little bit, we're ah. put a teaser out there, okay? So but tell tell me what 
But uh, brother, like it, it, it's so funny because I told you when we got in here, man, don't burn yourself because I'm probably glowing right now because <laughs> I got to talk to <clears throat> last night Bible study with my group uh, this morning. Uh, Paul Chouquet is a mentor of mine that's in Florida that I've talked to once a month and everything. And then I got to talk to the sage, Neil Pinkham, who's another mentor here locally, an older gentleman that, that helps me out with business stuff and all that. So like I he said, he works I, with you with Abel Shepherd. He does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. So I, like I said, back up a little bit. Yeah, don't, yeah. Burn, don't burn yourself heat, here. So it's it's, it's coming on. So uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, and then even the, it's funny we were talking about how certain words will speak to you like the pursuit like i was talking about pursuing yeah last night i was on fire about pursuing men's hearts like we're going yeah. for it. i'm coming for you yeah. period you know like if you're if you're that guy uh you know and that's in your heart I'll, i, I want to grab you and snatch you into the kingdom like right now that thing that's burning in your chest i should do something i should get ahead man i'm if you don't know what to do by now i'm gonna assign you something like we're, we're coming for you um and then the remnant he started talking about the remnant you know this morning coming in uh what moved me so much on sunday that we talked about last night was the book of esther and you just said hey jimmy you, for a time such as this we prayed before we started which i appreciate that yeah. and uh and you said that and i'm like man that, we're just on a roll here so anyways awesome. let me let me conduct let me gather myself yeah i will say for the football stuff i had it first jimmy graham yeah, okay I, i'm older than you i had it first and i'm <laughs> taking it back by the way yeah. they're gonna household name they'll be like i know that jimmy graham guy he's he works for the kingdom right like, that's right uh so uh let's see where do we start um it's kind of a train wreck of a, of a young man coming into I think this will speak to a lot of people where I got baptized, saved and baptized because it was kind of the thing to do in Sunday school. I, I knew it. I understood it, but I, uh, I understood what was going on, but I didn't fully grasp it. I'm kind of stubborn in the fact that I need um, I need life lessons to apply scripture to. And I go, oh, yeah, just because I'm stubborn. Right. I'm like, OK, sometimes I get it. And sometimes I need to be a man with some uh, some life history to say that's what you were saying. You know, I want I want to uh, I remember the, the first time that I walked back into a church, meaning walking back into a church because I was looking for something. I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And the first time I walked back into a church, it was like going down that list. Me and my buddy Gary Ellis, amazing guy. Oh, Gary. Um, we would sit around a campfire and talk. I'm like, do you ever wonder about this? Do you ever wonder about that? And he's like, I think you're looking for God, man. So I walked back into a church in, in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, still in the, in the, in the SEAL teams, like the, the area where I was in the SEAL teams. I can't remember if I was active duty at that point uh, or if I was working for the agency. And at that point, I was like, man, this guy is just going down the list of these questions that I had and just checking them off left and right. So I would say, you know, I, you know um, just quick hit on, you know, SEAL teams, about yeah. 15 years, East Coast, um, CIA, about seven years, um, overlapping with some reserve time that I stayed in there. So it was a little over eight years active duty because I always want to give honor uh, or honor the active duty guys that do a full 20 and all that stuff. So a little over eight years active duty for me, but another seven years reservist uh, that overlapped with uh, working for the CIA. So the CIA's protective officer program called GRS. If you've seen 13 hours, you understand a little bit more oh, yeah. about that. Yeah. And uh, um, I always looked at the SEAL teams as a, not as a destination. And I didn't understand that. You know, I thought, I'll do four and get out. You can't do four. Like, you're like, man, I, I haven't scratched that itch. So I did a little over eight, extended once. And, um, and still, um, it, it wasn't a destination. It was kind of like a, a, a step, you know, st step. And I don't want to belittle it all because it changed my life. I did a, lot, did a lot of growing up in the Navy. Then uh, worked for the agency. I tell people I've had two of the coolest jobs on the planet for a single guy with no kids. Mm. You know, once you get married and have a family, it just loses its luster. Absolutely patriotic and fully support the people that are doing that and are called to do that, you know, for a, for a career uh, all the way up to retirement because it's a big ask. We're asking these people to go into harm's way for us as a lifestyle mm -hmm. and knowing that that's going to sacrifice, um, you know, family time and all the things that we cherish. Um, uh, so I appreciate that on, on, a, on a great level. Uh, it just wasn't my calling. You know, it's like when I had kids, I'm like, I'm not going to mess this up, you know, so made that commitment. And I think one of the proudest things I'll ever say in my life is for someday to look them in the eye and honestly say, I chose you, you know, why, why yeah. didn't you do that? that? was such a cool job. And I'm like, I, I know. And I chose you, you know, and we took a, a financial hit for many years to uh to make that decision but it was the right one i don't i don't look back at all let me ask you this please i imagine that um part of that decision was also you're sort of all in with these guys i mean they've yeah. got your back you've got their back that's right literally <clears throat> right i mean we say that i brother i got your back yeah but when when you say that that means a different thing and i would imagine that you probably had to assess is there some part of me that's going to hold back or do something differently because now i have this new responsibility as a father and husband um, right. Yeah. And, and, and sort of, is that part of the decision? Not just, I, I choose you, but also I'm in effect sort of choosing my team yeah. by removing myself from that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, I think there's, there's a bit of just to be honest, a little bit of survivor's guilt. Mm -hmm. Cause there's like, uh, people don't, I thought about this in cars crazy. Right. I pulled up and I'm talking to Neil. I thought about this. 
was um, when people see me doing these things that I'm called to do, yeah. like, and this is this is metaphorical. I don't have a key, uh, you know, I don't. Have, I, I have my my wedding ring because I wear this safety ring, so I got my wedding ring and a cross. That's what I wear around my neck. Yeah. But uh, you know, symbolically, I feel like I'm wearing the dog tags of a lot of other people. You know what I mean? Mm. There's people that aren't around anymore. So there's there's a there's an amazing part in Private Ryan that talks about this, and you know at the very end, where you know the best thing that he can do to honor those guys is to live well, you know, and then that could be by anybody's definition, yeah. but mine comes from Scripture, and it's like, hey, this is the, you know, the Scriptures talk about, you know, what that fullness is, what that joy is. I would love to explain to some vet that is thinking about in in his life because the numbers are staggering, yeah. the difference between happiness and joy, because I could do it with. Jimmy Graham stories, like my life stories, I could back it all up with the Bible and say, brother, this is yours to have. Like the, the thing that I thought I was leaving with these guys was camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And then people, so when somebody said it, it dawned on me, they're like, You're, you created the thing you needed. And I'm like, absolutely. People go, thank you for making this program. I say, trust, I, one, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Two, I get this more out of this than anybody. Mm -hmm. Like literally when I leave that, you know, when I leave our shop and we're doing this stuff and I'm investing and adding value to men and women yeah. to better protect their loved ones, who do you think gets the most out of that? You know, That's these right. people leave 10 foot tall. I leave 20 foot tall, like every night. Mm. So it's unbelievable. And then to have an opportunity to, uh, to run the place. Like I said, this ain't my boss. I just get to drive it, you yeah. know? So Jesus is in the lead right here, power in this thing. I just get to drive it and people can't figure it out. If they're not believers, they're like, I just don't want to leave. And I'm like, let's talk about that. You, so we're going to get there. Too. I'll, I'll <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to be all over the, yeah, no, no, rain no, me fine. in my that's brother. Fine. Cause that's I'll fine. be all we're going to get the to Abel Shepherd here you, in a minute. Man, don't burn yourself. Um, yeah, I get you. <laughs> I, I love it. It's, I feel the heat. Um, but yeah, so talk then about, so we, I, I think where I, I asked you, um, about sort of the responsibility that you realized around, you know, a choosing your family, B choosing your units by yeah. removing yourself from them yeah. because you're realizing some things have changed. Right. So what then happened in, in your career and life, especially as, as it relates to walking with Christ, right. Through yeah. that, through that post active duty kind of experience. Yeah. I think that that search, you know, just being, you know, um, those life experiences. And then I think a seed was planted to that 10 year old little boy in a Baptist church in Missouri, you know, and, and, and I didn't, quite understand this until I explained it to that good buddy Gary and I was like yeah, man I just feel like you know what if I would have known all this stuff you know like known me like as, as Christ designed me on a mission what if I'd have known that what impact could I have made back then and he goes man you were that guy I'm like what I was like, man I feel like a train wreck I feel like I was out of control and I was running anyone to blow me and made a lot of mistakes and and you know and, and just everything that goes with that lifestyle yeah. um and he goes right he goes but we were you know, in some cases worse, we're looking to you to see what you're going to do, you know, that kind of thing. I'm like, really? Cause I didn't feel that way, you know? And then, uh, and then the responsibility, I think at some point in a young man's life, if they, if they've taken those choices or, or woman, you're just sick of apologizing in the morning. You know what I mean? You're like, Hey man, if you, you preach accountability, where's that start? You know, and it starts right here in this seat. So how many times are you going to wake up and apologize for being an idiot last night? You're like, wow, roger that. Okay. So that stings when it works both ways. It's easy to, I mean, I can, let me tell you how good I would be at, at, at squaring away your finances, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. not mine, yours, right. you know what I mean? That's right. Or your marriage or your whatever, Understood. but we just were too close to see it when it's us. Right. So I think when that hit, when that clicked, and this is an amazing thing, studying at Liberty University online from Tripoli, Libya, you know what I mean? With my computer open and the guy's talking and you're studying like you're in, you're in Beirut talking about Old Testament, but you're sitting in Beirut, Lebanon. It's a different deal. Right. Wow. So I'm looking at this. And I'm checking all this out and doing all this stuff. And then it dawns on me as a man of 30 something years old that hold on a second. And as I look at this Bible, there is an old covenant. There's a new covenant. There's a climax at a cross right in the middle and it's not done yet. Mm. So it just gave me the purpose. This is my story. Like the greatest story ever told. There's already a book of James, so I can't claim that. There's a book of Jimmy in this story in God's right. book version of this book. This is just the canonized version of it. But God has a story that's being written right now. And not only that, it's an action movie. Mm -hmm. Like this story isn't some, you know, after school special. That's All right. of a sudden the purpose comes out, accountability comes out. You say, what are you doing, man? You know, what, what do you, you, you have the opportunity. The thing that rocked me about Esther last night when, uh, or yesterday in church, sorry, two days ago in church and then last night in the Bible study uh, for a time such as this. Um, and I'll just, I'll share this. I know I'm getting off on a tangent a little bit, That's but right. in the SEAL teams, just being kind of a foolish young man, didn't know what he's talking about. We gravitate towards warrior stuff, like Viking, mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. And uh, something that says, um, hurry, you know, hurry to res to find Valhalla before somebody takes your place. That kind of like sexy kind of thing that, that goes along with a, a warrior movie. Right. Um, That's heaven, right? That's the Nordic kind of right, version right. of Right, right. Valhalla. Like, get in there. So then uh, the book of Esther. 
right? And what does it say? Mordecai comes to Esther and says, you were positioned here for a time such as this. And if you don't do it, shame will come on your family, death, I think it says, uh, and he'll use somebody else. Mm. So like somebody will take your place. Mm. Like God, ne- God doesn't need you. Period. He doesn't need your money. Right. He doesn't need your efforts. He needs nothing. He will do this and you will use it. You'll lose a chance at touching glory because you didn't act. So he says, get in there or yeah. somebody else will. You, we, you know, we often read, and Hutch and I were talking about this on the last episode, is we read some of the stuff that's out of context, right? Yeah. So some of the some of the cliche verses, and not that that's one, <clears> but it's sort of, you've been called for such a time as this. It's almost, The implication is almost... God's been waiting for you to be born because nothing could get done until, you <laughs> until were you're here. born, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. chosen you and he's waiting. And could you grace him with, you know, wanting to, you know, acknowledge this calling? No, but the rest of it is this is what you were born for. Step into it or some bad stuff may may be on the horizon, right? And and sometimes bad stuff is just an unfulfilled life. Yeah. That's right. It? Like there's an opportunity presented to you, and this is what I wrote in my notes yesterday. Yeah. God forged you for 47 years, Jimmy Graham, for a time such as this. Mm. Like right now, you have an opportunity to touch glory. And the reason I say don't, you know, no guts, no glory, that that sells a Dodge truck. I get it, right? And I get it. It's sexy and all that kind of stuff. But when people cling to glory, they have fixed to glory. Child stars all the time. Mm. You see them disintegrate before your eyes. And there's a bunch of people getting rich off of them that don't mind. You know, it doesn't matter who. You see they're all got their claws in, and this person is destroyed. Sometimes it's suicide, Kurt Cobain. Sometimes it's a little Lindsay Lohan kind of thing. And they're cashing in left and right, and they don't care there's a human being that's destroyed after this because they clutch so hard to glory. Now, glory, you've touched it, I've touched it. When you're granted with that and you give it back to God, you change forever. Mm. You know what I mean? But mm. you can't, you're not designed to, this glory's God's. So if you try to affix to that, man, it's just a matter of time. Mm-hmm. You know, that no, no, God's no glory and glory goes to the ball. Okay, I get it. It's yeah. sexy and it'll get people to enlist and buy a Dodge truck. It just means there's a whole other part of this. And if you don't understand that, it can be destructive. Yeah. And, and we have been called for such a time as this, right? And, and, you know, I think about, there's a quote, I forgot who said it, but it says an unexamined life is not worth living or something like that, mm-hmm. something to that effect. But there is an, uh, this idea um, that, you know, to understand that your story is being written, Bible says that we are living epistles, yeah. story, we're living mm-hmm. stories known and read of, known and read of men. Yeah. Like people are looking at Jimmy Graham, watching your story and understanding something about God. Right? That's right. And we have a responsibility the way that we carry ourselves. And we, we mentioned a little bit earlier um, that God always has a remnant, doesn't he? Yeah. And uh, so talk about that, because I, I am really interested in it, because I, I just, the way I envision, you know, your life and, and being, you know, on, on active duty as a sniper or something is in some cave in Afghanistan, okay? This is my vision yeah. of it, right? Some cave in Afghanistan with, a, with men beside you, right, that dependent one on the other, a remnant, so to speak. It's, it's us mm-hmm. or nobody, because you may not even have been acknowledged that you're there, because you may have been on missions where, you know, is that top secret that, you know what I'm saying? Sure. sort of you're on your own and here's your mission um and so my my mind goes to david and his mighty men that were in this cave right and they were called the remnant they were called the mighty men mm-hmm. and they were being trained in in the secret place why not so that they could you know kind of remain there but god had a mission for them outside of the cave that's right, right? talk about what that experience was like in your life where what was god training you for why you were in this place yeah Oh man, like like I said, like the for forty seven years been forged, and there's a, there's a there's a guy that I consider a mentor and a friend um, named Dwayne Dieter CQD. He uses that for his initial training, forged. And if you think about the forging process, there's fire, there's pressure. You're beating on it's not like a, a pleasant thing, right? But you're banging out impurities to make stronger steel. You know, that's my life. That's your life. That's mm-hmm. our lives. Yeah. So if you're being forged for a purpose, you know. Um, it's it's unbelievable the the some of the stuff I wouldn't change it for the world, but it was rough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We launched a business and it failed. And, I, and and by the way, Navy SEALs don't fail. So that just dug a little deeper, I think, than it would. I, I don't know this, but you know, when men suffer what they think is failure, you know, and then later you you know through books called Failing Forward by by, by uh, John Maxwell, other people saying. No, you, brother, you have to do that. That has to happen. Mm-hmm. Like you have to get there. And I've said this on my podcast: is two guys are on a mountaintop. One guy climbed, maybe lost buddies along the way, took him a year, whatever. Another guy flew into the helicopter. When they're on that mountaintop, they're not seeing the same thing. 
they don't see it. Like the thing that he's seeing is this glorious, beautiful commitment, blah, blah, blah. And he gets to stand there and soak in every, you know, vision. This other guy's like, eh, take it or leave it and go on to the next mountaintop. It's just a different thing. Uh, and it's a better view. So I wouldn't change it for the world at this point, because for 47 years, I've been forced to be sitting right here with you, yeah. you know, and my kids get to watch it wow. and this community that we're blessed with and all that. So I think leaving that, uh, the SEAL team community, uh, that camaraderie, it was a big hit. Leaving GRS, you know, global response staff for the CIA, that was a big hit because there's a saying in, that we use in the SEAL teams, I'm sure it's all over, you know, literally we use it kind of flippantly, like, but you mean it. Like, uh, you know, you know, John, oh, John, oh man, I'd kill or die for that guy. Mm. Like, whoa, mm. say that again, mm. you know. To say, to be in a room with people that mean it, that might have to prove it tomorrow, mm. it's a different thing, you know what I mean? So it's not a bumper sticker. It's not a no guts, no glory. It's not a thing like that. It's like, check me on that. Next week, check me on that. When we're standing there in Afghanistan, we'll see if I mean that. You know, you're like, holy. Yeah. So to pull away from that is a tough deal when you're called to do that, you know? And and I get it. Some people, um, they've I've heard the whole, um, oh, why didn't you stay in, all that kind of stuff. Um, I do struggle with, you know, what ifs, but, but um, uh, for example, um, what if I wouldn't have rotated out of Benghazi three weeks earlier? Part of me says I'm a pretty aggressive guy. When I'm in work, I'm in business mode. I'm all happy, fun, dad, Jimmy guy, whatever. Uh, when I'm at work, I'm all I'm on business because I take it very, very seriously, defending people's lives. Um, and I don't m mix my words. So I, th I feel like I would have gotten people moving quicker. I don't know that. Just I know the guy that was there. And this is the guy was in the movie, by the way. This is a different guy. Okay. Um, he was kind of a passive guy that really didn't speak up. That's okay. So Roan had to take over, right, and did that thing. Um, I feel like I'd have got it, launching early, and this is all what if, so it doesn't really matter. Maybe that wouldn't have developed, and it had been that bad, and there might be an ambassador alive today. Mm -hmm. So I get to wrestle with that. Mm -hmm. However, so let's take that a step further. Or I wouldn't be sitting here, married to Rachel, raising four kids. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So that it's it's. Uh, I won't say it keeps me awake at night, but like I said, like you're like what if, and you're like, hey man, let go of the what if. How about you know? What if you change this world? How yeah. it's a better what if? You know, what if God spoke to you tomorrow and you launched a thing that that birthed community and camaraderie? That is so good, Jimmy. Because, man, there's there's so many guys and girls out there right now struggling that with that question of what if, yeah. struggling with yeah, regrets. Yeah, yeah. I, I would venture to say that that question probably causes more people to lose sleep than any other question. Yeah. Um, and, and we have to come to the place that you come to, regardless of the extremity of our circumstance. Yours is a little bit more is yeah. different than, than you know, somebody that may have lost their job. Mm. Although not to minimize that, right? That's a trauma in their life. Sure, absolutely. Um, but God says in Romans 8, 28, says that he works all things together for good. Doesn't mean that all things are good, right? Yeah. In, individually, doesn't mean that this thing that happened today necessarily has to feel good but it's going to be worked together for good and yeah. a, so there's a bigger story as we're talking about absolutely but somehow through all of this god just put on your heart this this idea that man my life is about going after the hearts of men isn't it yeah talk about that and and what you're doing how able shepherd you're the ceo and founder of, of uh organization called able shepherd correct um how that was birthed what the heart was behind that and what where you're going from here man uh it's a beautiful story. It's a long story. It's an ugly story, but I'll just, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version, is that in 2012, prior to the Benghazi attack, my wife and I started a company called Duty to Act LLC. And we said, you know what? We, we see this, this active shooter thing, though it was less, you know, common. Back then, we said, I'm not comfortable with the level of security in my church, in my school, and quite frankly, in my communities, like law enforcement. Uh, absolutely support law enforcement because we train them. We train them all the time. We give out free stuff. We say, this is the way we're doing this. Cops come to me and say, how are you teaching deconfliction? And we run them through a quick whatever. Um, so we, we thought that it was needed. It was just early. So we launched it as Duty Act LLC in, in, uh, in Castle Rock. Didn't go. Just struggled. Just a year. Uh, you know, and that's the ringer. Going through the valleys of, I worked for a year for the railroad. You know, get dirty, construction, heavy equipment kind of job. Worked for a year for a fundraising company uh, called Integrity uh, Fundraising. Um, just, you know, not my calling, but necessary. You know, and then again, God's like, you need to see this. You need to put value on dollar bills again. You know, because you've been making a lot of money doing this thing. And it just reminded me um, of um, that, that, that there's a cost associated with this decision you made but it's worth it. You know, like, hey, son, just just trust me on this one, you know? So A leads to B leads to C, and we uh, we launched Duty to Act. We get an opportunity to teach at Centennial Gun Club in a building that they had moved out of. So we move into that building and uh, 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 launching a thing called the Active Shooter Response Training Center. 
which also doesn't go. About a year into it, the vision that was cast, the marketing didn't work, and I'm about ready to walk out the door just mm -hmm. to go find something else. Um, and then I, there's one more chance at, at uh, I, I, you know, pray about it. We come up with a term, Abel Shepherd, meaning Abel is incapable, A-B-L-E, and then shepherd, meaning shepherd sheep. Mm -hmm. There had been a movement called the sheepdog movement that still exists and I fully support. But I study, again, I studied scripture and saying sheepdog. Let's look to scripture for this and didn't find it, except for a couple of negative connotations talking about sheepdogs. I get the concept because it comes from a conversation with Dave Grossman was writing about a conversation with a Vietnam vet, mm -hmm. right? But it's kind of that mad, I'm a sheep dog, you know, like a, I, and please don't take this the wrong way, but I say, you know, the, the, the mad grandpa, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? The shaking his fist yeah, yeah. at the TV, and he's, I'll, I'll shoot a guy, and all because I, because I, I have one of these in my family, by the way. Um, and, and I know his heart, and in his heart, he's protecting his children. But you know what they think? Mm. scared of grandpa yeah. and I don't really want him at Thanksgiving yeah. Yeah. he's missing the best part you know what I mean so yeah. he's staring at the horizon waiting for Al-Qaeda and then they never come then he realizes too late that man what, what have I just done mm -hmm. so the shepherd part was really really heavy on my heart and then I found you know first Peter 5 2 to 4 uh, mm -hmm. talking exactly about we are shepherds not because we have to be because we're willing because God calls you to be that and not for unju unjust gain you know um, unrighteous gain uh, and to humbly walk down this walk until the chief shepherd returns. And then it's right. back in his hands. It's like some of us are called to, to, to protect others. And, but what if yeah. the attack doesn't happen? Not just protective, proactively saying it's my job to shepherd. Whose job is it to protect your children? It's yours. Mm -hmm. Who else? It's mine. You know, whoa, I don't even, you don't even know my kids. I don't care. They're mm -hmm. children. It's mm -hmm. my job to protect them. If I see them being harmed, I will get involved right. because they're children. So I think that shepherding, well, what if they're never attacked? Then it's my job. Whose job is to grow them? It's yours. Who else? It's mine, right? So we wow. can educate children. And, uh, you know, I've told the kids at my, my daughter's school, you want to be a pilot when you grow up? Because I know pilots. Let's go for a flight. You want to be a doctor? I know doctors. Let's get in there for a day. You might think that you like the idea of being a doctor. Mm -hmm. And then you see blood and pass out. Or you don't like it or whatever. Mm -hmm. You go, you know what? I like the Hollywood version of this. It's like, well, let's go find out. Because it's a good investment before you go spend all this money becoming a thing that you don't even like. So that's where I think that that, that you know, I'm sorry. Let's, I'm, like I said, no, real man, brother, we're going. I love that. It, it, you know, in, in when we think about shepherds, right? We always think about David. Man, he was he's a model shepherd. Yeah. And I love I love where where you kind of pivoted away from the sheep dog over to the shepherd. And there is an aspect of in Psalms twenty three. It says that, uh, "Yea, they'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear, fear no evil." But it says that uh, they will lie down in green pastures beside yeah. still waters. But then later, uh, when he's confronted, as, or actually before this, as, as a young man, he was confronted with Goliath, yeah. the Philistine. And he said, you know what, man, it, as a shepherd, I, I grabbed lions by their beard and killed them. Yeah, yeah. I killed bears. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would stand right. against the armies of the living God? He will be as one of them. Yeah. So there is a protective bit that comes up as part of a responsibility of being a shepherd, but there's also the gentle part, isn't there? Yeah. Right. And it's really a model for us as fathers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that that is a, uh, a strength. I think there's a book out there called the boy crisis and this man, this will get me going as far as, um, it, it, it talks about a purpose void in young men, mm. you know, and you can see it playing out yeah. and it's an orchestrated thing. It's a tactic. And, uh, and, and there's no way that that's going to, that tactic will be used on my son. You know, you can be believe what you want because I'm not in charge of you, I'm charging me. Yeah. But don't try to get me to repeat it to my son and call it good because I won't. You know what I mean? So that's the thing no that is going to be a battle and they talk about a purpose void. So if you've got a purpose void, again, from the, the, boy, the boy crisis, this book that I just uh, discovered is... They say that in, in like the World War II time frame, you would have a, um, you know, like our grandfathers, men's purpose was to risk their life in war mm -hmm. and raise money for, to raise the kids, right? And women were to ra risk their life in childbirth and to raise children, right? So raise money, raise children, all that stuff. But now there's a purpose void, meaning that in times of, um, in times of survival, boys are cherished. In times of luxury, girls are cherished. Right. So the purpose goes away from you saying, you know what, we don't really need warriors anymore. So go and do your like, well, wait a minute. That was kind of my. OK. And then you say, um, well, you're you're the breadwinner of the family. Well, she's got a job, too. So like you're just diminished and diminished. But now you got a fatherless generation where dad doesn't come in and say, let's find you a new purpose. So now they're walking around with a purpose and they are sought out by ISIS, by gangs, by even the military, like whatever. That's just, hey, join a club. And sometimes those aren't healthy clubs. Right. right? So now you fast forward and this is where we're at. 
You know, they're like right now, I just heard this week that they're trying to put legislation forward calling the Bible hate crime. I mean, hate. This is hate, yeah, speech. hate speech. We need to ban the Bible. I'm like, how do you think we got here? And then and then back into my calling right now, not just with Abel Shepherd and, and creating that, that community, but literally launching a pursuit uh, to snatch men, like snatch their heart and pull them in and be like, hey, man, you're with me now. Here's the deal, whatever, if those are so called, because that must be fixed. You know, if you if you let that happen um, and we say this in the active shooter world, that kid didn't decide the day before to go in and shoot up a school. Right. That started a long, long time ago. And if we really want to be honest, we back up and look at the family situation. Man, this was heading this direction for a long, long time. Yeah. How do we fix that? So if we say, if we, if we create stronger men, if we facilitate, because God will create it, if we facilitate stronger men, you've, you've done, you can't even measure what you just did for mm. those kids. You know what I mean? And then in ourselves, how do I invest in Christian Eden, you know, Sarah and Rebecca? Invest in Jimmy Graham, you know what I mean? Rachel Graham, if we can model that and be better, a better couple, meaning better individuals that love each other and, and, and honor God, mm. man, we already did invest in those kids because wow. they get to see it every single day. The, my community, we were just at a, a barbecue this Sunday and they're walking around and they're playing and there's other kids and there's other adults and there's American flags and that stuff. I'm not worried about somebody slipping with an F-bomb. Mm. I'm not worried about somebody dragging them off and telling them about some other false God. I'm not worried about that, why? Because we have... Uh, uh, left and right, I call them left and right flanks, what they call boundaries. Yeah. On a range, they're called left <laughs> and right. We have a left and right flank that we yeah. set. Yeah. And we said, hey, um, they just know the deal. Like, watch your language, yeah. especially in the building. And this is counter gun culture, right? Because everybody's right. like, effing, 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 whatever. Right. You get in there and you say, hey, you know, the first time you correct a guy, he's a vet, he's doing this thing, and he, he thinks that's what Navy SEAL Jimmy Graham wants to hear. And I go, can you watch your language, please? And then they fix it, it's done. Mm. So I don't have to worry about it again. Mm -hmm. But then they say, what if somebody just couldn't get a handle on it? And I was like, well, you know, as a grown man, what if you can't watch your mouth? That's not like you've got a condition. That's right. a choice. Right. And, and the, the truth of the matter is, is that this is my business and my kids are welcome here anytime. Mm -hmm. And if you can't watch your language, that's just easy math because they're welcome here anytime. I don't have to look left and right to see that's if right. they're here. They're welcome here any given time, right? right? And it's contagious. That stuff will start and then you got to reel it back in. Or, uh, you know, like I said, it's not been an issue again. Well, it, and... Quite frankly, there's something different about a Navy SEAL asking you to control your speech <laughs> than somebody else just saying, hey, could you watch your tongue? Okay, well, let's put yeah, that aside. This is, that, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a fair statement. I got on my instructor saying, hey, guys, I don't, I'm not going to be the only guy asking. So yeah. now they ask, and it's mutually that's respected. Great. Yes, there was. I did set that as a standard saying, I'm not in charge of you. You're yeah. a grown man friend on the that's earth. Right. And you can do whatever you want. You just can't do it here. Yeah. Right? This is my piece of real estate. God, you know, God blessed us with control over this. Again, his bus, I'm driving. But he asked me to put these, you know, through, through um, speaking to me, uh, you know, into, into my heart. Um, man, I don't like being around that. You know, it's like I've seen how caustic that can be. And I know that guys are going to cut me to pieces as far as especially Navy SEALs and all that stuff. That's part of the thing. And it's black humor. And, you know, sometimes guys can uh, when it's or what is called dark, 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 humor, yeah, dark humor for uh, firefighters and cops. And all that. Yeah. I totally understand it. But I've seen if I'm honest, I can see that it's a destructive in that it kills relationships. Yeah. And people go, oh, you just judge people. We all judge. people. Let's be honest. There are people that you've categorized and saying nice enough guy will never be at my house. Yeah. That's just the truth, right? Because right? you can't watch his language. Some right. eternal judgment. It's like, it's like yeah. the, 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 the people that I present in front of my children, because of my job, yeah. says, this is an option. Do you want to be like Bill? Well, if Bill is that person, I will not present him in front of my children mm -hmm. saying this is an option. I won't be hanging out with them, whatever. Yeah. It's just there's too many great relationships out there to harm my children by bringing in the wrong guys. No doubt, no you doubt. Know? Well, Jimmy, in the last two minutes we have left, I want you to cast a vision of where God is calling you and, and what he's put on your heart. <laughs> and I know that's, <laughs> that's a lot to say, minutes. but, but here's, here's, here's the thing yeah. about it. I, I, want it, I want people to know what you're doing and how they can connect with you and support you through this, right? Yeah. Um, if they w want to be on board with this. And, and knowing that we're going to save some details for that pursuit story. Remember, we got to yeah, tease yeah. this no up. Worries, we got no to, we got to, no worries, got to have people coming back. <laughs> I'll try to shoot for two minutes. I don't know if we have time. <laughs> if, uh, so I truly believe that I've found an avenue to men's hearts, mm -hmm. right? And, and if you've got time, check out Ride for Lance. It's on Amazon Prime. You can go in there and watch it. It's, much, it's Navy SEALs honoring a buddy doing a 12,000-mile motorcycle ride mm -hmm. from Virginia Beach to Alaska, Alaska and back, right? Um, it became a movie, uh, you know, whatever, venture motorcycle deal. We did one last year called Justice for Stevie. My, my brother went through some horrific things, and to help him, this one wasn't a fundraiser. The first one was, was like $50,000 for the SEAL community. The second one we did uh, was a 4,000-mile ride to, uh, to get guys out, to, for my brother because he lost his granddaughter to a horrible child abuse situation, mm -hmm. right? So he just needed to, 
Anyways, when you go on an adventure with men, it changes. So we're launching one. We're upgrading, looking at a new location for Abel Shepherd to expand yet again into another building, but then to bring that in there, meaning provide adventure as an avenue to, to get into these men's hearts. Meaning, you know, if you want to come hang out almost like a boys and girls club, mm. but for grown adults, now your kids are welcome there, bring them in and surround them with these good people. And let's go in and do an adventure. At least once a year, we go and do a fundraiser. We got on motorcycles and buggies and do all this stuff and just go get in the mountains. Very Christ-centered thing saying, hey, this is an option. You know, young man, this, did you ever realize that men talk to each other like this? This is the way you honor a friend of yours and it's not destructive. And this is the way that you were built. And let's go find your purpose. All of these things are absolutely amazing. And I see people dying for it every single day. Now, honorably, they go to work, they go home. They go to work, they go home. And they do this. And that's an honorable, noble thing but something's missing. There's that piece in there that you were designed for and the yeah. world's telling you it's wrong and it's not. So literally, it's, it's on my heart. We're going to write a book. I talked to my guy today. He says, Jimmy, that book's already written. He goes, you've been talking forever about this. Just put it on paper. It's already written. So now we're going to uh, commit some resources to writing a book about this and truly inviting men into, I believe, taking this nation back. Love that. If people out there want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? So you got ableshepherd.com? Yeah, right? ableshepherd.com. Okay. Yep, follow us on Facebook. At this was, like Until they ban us, that's where we're going to be putting our stuff. Uh, the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham is our voice. Uh, we have the video portion of it, and then we have the podcast version of it wherever you get your podcasts. Fantastic. Thank you for joining me today. Cheers, man. brother. That's a good morning. I can't wait to do the story actually right after this. These guys out there are going to have to wait 30 days. <laughs> I get to hear it in about 20 minutes. Let's do man. it, brother. I'm excited. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to uh, to The Pursuit. Uh, you can do that um, in the YouTube channel, which there's a little subscribe thing. I think Jimmy's on this side. It may be on that side. I could be wrong about that. <laughs> it's somewhere on the screen. You should be able to see it. Also, check us out on the thepursuitonline.com. You can click subscribe there. we got a bunch of tools and resources out there that we want to uh, as we say, relent, uh, to come alongside you to help you relentlessly pursue truth, but not just truth, truth and transformation. Amen. One of the things we, we decided, man, real early on is truth without transformation is impotent. Yeah. Transformation Amen. without truth, inauthentic. Yep. Think about that. The gyms are filled with them every day, man. That's right. People out there after transformation with no basis in truth. Yep. So anyway, we want to come alongside you guys and help you. Thank you for uh, tuning in today, and we look forward to seeing you next time. We'll see you.